Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Ajit Khan, a senior DevOps engineer and an Udemy instructor, also a community builder of AWS. In this video, we are going to talk about IAM conditions. So IAM provides few really helpful conditions that we can utilize to have more security in our AWS environment. So we are going to discuss this in terms of AWS exams as well. And you can also learn it to tighten the security in your AWS resources. So these are really helpful and easy to understand once you know how to read it out. So without waiting much, let's get started. So first of all, we are going to see IAM policy based on source IP. So here is our IAM policy and it's a deny rule. So effect is deny and we are denying every action. The asterisk sign means all. So we are denying all actions on all resources based on this condition. Now the condition is based on source IP. So we are saying deny everything on all resources if the request is not from these IP address and these are the IP ranges. So what this essentially means is deny anything that does not come from these two sources source IP ranges. So any request coming from these range of IPs will be allowed but any requests that are not coming from any of these two range of IPs will have the effect of deny. The cool thing about IAM policies is that you can read them out loud in plain English and you will know what they are doing. For example, as we just discussed now, we are denying everything on all resources based on the condition if the traffic is not from the source IP. So these are useful when IP addresses of your company are within specific range and this policy does not allow any kind of actions but you can use this policy in combination of other policies which allow to perform some action. So deny rules are generally in place to restrict certain actions but if you want to allow certain actions then you need to create allow policies explicitly and this will be a best practice. Next thing is having IAM policy based on tag. So you can have tag based restriction as well. So generally when you create your AWS resources, you can tag them. So tag is a key value that you give to any AWS resource while creating them or even after creating them. So here is an example policy. So in this policy, we are denying all but the product managers. So let us try to understand what this policy is doing. So the effect is deny. That means we are denying anything in AWS for the action put object in S3 and on this resource so anything inside this production bucket so this trailing slash and asterisk sign means anything in this bucket so this is the resource we are having this deny policy on and the condition here is string not equals to principal tag job title product manager so what this policy is doing it is denying everyone in aws for the action put object in s3 on this s3 bucket it is denying everyone except product managers so IAM policy is to create a tag based restriction with condition keys as per use case and this provides restriction for an Amazon S3 bucket for the action Amazon S3 put object to deny everyone except those who are with the title product manager. So this is also helpful to tighten the security. Next thing is deny access to AWS based on requested region. So this is the example policy here we are denying all actions on the given resources if the requested reason does not match to the given regions. So let us read out the policy. This policy denies access to any actions outside the regions specified using the AWS requested region condition key. So this is useful when we have to restrict any action outside the regions specified. And please note that this policy does not allow any type of action, but you can use this policy in combination of other policies which allow to perform some actions. Next thing is denying access to AWS based on MFA. So if you want to enforce multi-factor authentication, you can use this kind of condition and it will be helpful for you if you want to restrict access based on MFA. So in this policy, the effect is allow and on principle on this AWS account. So we are allowing on this account and the action is STS assume role. So we are allowing to assume role based on this condition. And in this condition, we are saying multi-factor auth present to be true. So we are essentially saying here is assume role is allowed when multi-factor authentication is present or enabled. 
So in this case, users can assume the role if the user is authenticated using MFA. MFA condition in a policy to check properties. So you can check duration, grant access only within a specific time after MFA authentication. Existence to check that user did authentication with MFA. Now let us discuss the difference between IAM role versus resource based policies. So you have IAM roles which you can apply on user or groups and you have resource based policy for example bucket policy or SQS policy which you can apply on SQS or S3 and you can allow or deny stuff accordingly. So roles can act as a proxy to allow other users and services to access resources. So we are essentially attaching a role to someone and we can allow them or deny them to access AWS resources. Whereas resource based policy helps in sharing the resource as a policy directly attached to the resources. So we are not attaching the policy to any user in case of resource based policy. Instead, the policy is itself attached to the resource. Role supports trust-based policy which helps in deciding who can access the resource. Whereas resource-based policies specify who as a principal can access the resource. So in resource-based policy, whoever is specified in the principal can be allowed or denied according to the policy. Roles can temporarily give up his own permission and take permission of role and when user exits original permission can be restored. So a role can be assigned to anyone and if the user is assuming any other role role then the original role will not be applied anymore and once the assumed role is given up then the old permissions are restored. In resource based policy while cross account access user still not give his own permission in place of role permission. So in this case you don't have to give up your existing role and you can have policy applied to the principal. Roles can access almost all resources so roles can be created for any resources in AWS whereas you can share limited number of resources using resource based policy for example you have bucket policy for S3 and you have policies for SNS, SQS but you do not have policy for EC2 instance or Route 53 or any other service in AWS. For that you need to create IAM policies and roles. So these are the major differences between role based policies and resource based policies. One more scenario where you can differentiate between these two is that suppose you are in account A and the bucket is in account B and you want to put an object in S3 bucket of account B. So you have an existing role and you have a role in account B. You will need to assume role of account B to access the S3. But in that case you will need to give up your previous role in account A which might have access to MySQL in RDS. So the drawback of role based policy is that you need to give up your existing policy if you are assuming a role on other account. Suppose if you have and if you want to fix this scenario then we can have a resource based policy like a bucket policy in account B so that it allows a particular user in account A to allow access to this S3 bucket. In this case user in account A doesn't need to give up its original IAM role. So these are the basic differences between these two. Hope this video was useful and now you have a good knowledge about IAM condition and its practices. These scenarios can be useful for AWS exam. I hope you will be able to answer them in the AWS exam. I hope you like the video. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching.